Greetings, Hoodoo family. When things start to go bad, when your luck has run out and hardship is set in, when you want to attract love, when you need protection, money, healing, gambling, or maybe you just need power in a situation, in traditional Hoodoo, there is a mojo for every single one of these goals. So let's talk about these secret and sacred Hoodoo spirits. But before we get started, family, if you would like to increase your Hoodoo knowledge, check out my books on my website. In my Hoodoo basic training textbook, there is a whole chapter on Hoodoo vessels that includes mojos. So if you're new to Hoodoo, this is a great place to start. I don't just tell you about it. I actually show you how to do it. And you can go to my website, like I said, and see all of my books if you're interested in learning about hoodoo. So family, a mojo is a vessel, much like the statue for an African Nikisi. It's more than a bag with things in it. It's a living vessel containing spirits. Its purpose is to work with you to accomplish your goal. Now you might hear a mojo called a lucky hand or hand. Many other forms of this uh, could be a Toby, but they're all the same. They're all part of the mojo family. And the origins of the mojo can be traced back to Africa. And we always associate mojos with the traditional red flannel fabric but early hoodoo mojos were actually made from animal skin. A lot of them were leather. A lot of them were just made with old pieces of worn cloth that our ancestors could um, pull together. And sometimes they were made with large leaves, but all of these were wrapped, usually looking like a package. And sometimes they would just be folded pieces of cloth with a knot and sometimes they would be an actual bag. So there's many forms of mojos. Greetings family. So here is a very simple and easy mojo that you can do for yourself. And this is going to be a money mojo that I'm going to demonstrate to you. So I have this piece of uh, printed green fabric. I really like this. I have a lot of fabric on hand. So um, I'm going to use this piece right here. So what I want to do, I'm going to cut this square into a circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. So we have our circle. And before I do anything else, I want to take the time to thank God for all of the resources that he has provided me that I may use to help me on my journey through life. And especially these resources that I can use to help me during my hardship. And I want to ask the ancestors to bless my hands, to bless the work that I'm about to do, to bless this mojo, to open up a path for abundance and financial assistance, to help me overcome any financial obstacles, hardships that I might be encountering. And just thanking all of the spirits here that I'm about to work with. So now that I have my circle, I'm going to move these scissors. Um, what I want to do is start assembling the key spirits that I intend to work with. And I have this dollar bill. So I'm going to lay this dollar bill down on this circle. And I'm just going to rub it to get my energy on it because I want this mojo to bring me 
financial assistance, to bring me financial aid. Next, I have a very small high John the Conqueror root that I'm going to situate there. I also have a very small pyrite stone, which is for wealth and money. And High John is calling on the spirit of High John the Conqueror to help me in my financial endeavors, to help me with my financial challenges, to give me the wisdom, the wit, the strength, the miracles that I need to overcome any obstacles. I'm also going to add this little small piece of possum bone. Bone is to fill in the gap between the land of the living and uh, the spiritual realm to open up that door for miracles, to open up that door for my ancestors to work for me, to open up that door for greater prosperity. You can use any kind of bone as long as it's dried. You can use any kind of bone you wish. I'm also going to add a magnet. I'm going to put this in here so that it can help attract and pull those resources to me. Now, I'm also going to add a small little mirror to attract the energy, the spirit that I need. I'm also going to be adding, don't know if you can see it, my hair to this to give it my essence. And I want to add a little bit of graveyard dirt from an ancestor here. Just a small little amount, not a lot. Set that aside. And I'm going to ball all of this up into the dollar. Not sure you can see me doing this. But I want to ball this all up into this dollar bill. You see that? Everything is contained in there. I'm going to blow on it. I'm going to give it my energy. Give it more of my essence. So blew on it three times. And now I'm going to assemble it. And I'm going to ask God to bless me, my ancestors, to work with me financially to overcome any obstacles I have. And I have this piece of string. No, it's not green. And your string doesn't have to be green. In fact, your mojo fabric doesn't have to be green either. So I'm going to put the ends of the string together and find the center just about here. I'm going to take this center of the string and wrap it around my mojo real tight. Wrap it around there real tight. I'm going to take the other side of the string and do the same thing in the opposite direction. Keep winding it and there I have my two sides together. Now with this mojo, you can actually wear it around your neck. All you have to do is uh, tie the two ends around your neck at the length that you desire. Or you can cut the string short and use it as a hand mojo and just carry this in your hand. The key is to have the mojo not be too big. You want it this Okay, so to finish this off, I'm just going to hold it in my hand and just let it roll in my hand, get my energy, become familiar with me. For the next days, I'm going to carry it or I might wear it around my neck, hidden under my clothes, which I think I'll do. Um, but I'm going to wear this as much as I can because I want this mojo to exchange energy with me. 
I want this mojo to work for me. And in order for it to work for me, it has to know who I am. It has to become familiar with me. Now, the final step that I'm going to do, take a little bit of my oil here. And I want to just anoint it. I want to anoint my mojo. Just give it a little oil. I always put the oil at the top of the mojo. Never on the bottom because I don't want mold or anything to start building up in the mojo. So I've anointed it. And now all I have to do is just hold this. Keep this near me. Wear it. Wear it as much as I can so that, like I said, it can exchange that energy. Now you can also, to further empower it, you can place this on a plate. And I'll show you that. If you can't do a hoodoo circle, one thing you can do is use that plate. The same plate we did for the ancestor altar. You can place your mojo in the center and surround it with money, surround it with offerings, same principle, surround it with anything that associates with money, wealth, prosperity, offerings. That is what you want to focus on when you're building this out. During your mojo ritual, speak over it, ask it to work for you and tell it specifically what you need. Pray over it and thank God for it. Ask your ancestors to give it their power. Thank the mojo. Give it a name. Call it your spiritual friend. Light candles around it during your ritual and hold it in your hands during the ritual and place it on the plate. Speak over it. And just remember to conduct your mojo ritual for at least three days. But however many days you like, the longer you do it, the stronger it'll become. Wear it on you for as much as possible. Now, I'd like to give you five tips for working with your mojo. Number one, keep your mojo secret. Remember, your mojo is your friend, so treat it like one. Number two, if you have a protection, a healing, or maybe a blessing mojo, let it bask in the power of the morning sunrise for victory and strength. Number three, if you have a love, a money, gambling, good luck mojo, use the power of a new moon for increase and growing influence. Number four, feed your mojo a drop of liquor around the top of the opening. Be careful about adding liquor to the contents because this can create mold and do the opposite actually of what you intended. So you can dress it periodically also with a oil for the purpose of the mojo, or you can use liquor, or both. Number five, keep your mojo near you frequently. Carry it in your hand around the house. Ladies, you can tuck it in your bra. Just let it become familiar with your spirit so that it can begin to work for you. This is what people sometimes don't get. You really have to connect with your mojo. So family, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you want to learn more about traditional hoodoo work of our ancestors, visit my website and check out my books. Subscribe to this channel and join me on this hoodoo journey if you enjoyed the videos that you've seen thus far. I also have a hoodoo camp meeting on Zoom once a month. If you'd like to be considered to join that group, contact me through my website. There is no cost. It's just free. And I just ask that you be serious about authentic Afrocentric hoodoo. So family, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.